or defined as collection of nerve fibers within the central nervous system which have same origin, course and termination or a collection of nerve fibers which connects two masses of grey matter within the central nervous system constitutes tract. Some of the tracts are termed as fasciculi that is bundles or lemniscae that is ribbons. The tracts are named after the names of two masses of grey matter connected by them. The first term represents the origin and the second term the termination of the tract. For example, spinocerebellar tract. See spino, the first term represents the origin of the tract. Cerebella, it represents the termination of the tract. So it arises from the spinal cord and ends in the cerebellum. Uh, for example, here, cartico-spinal tract. The first term represents the origin of the tract, that is from the cerebral cortex of the brain, and spinal represents the spinal cord. So the two terms represent the two grey masses of the tract. Classification of tracts. The tracts are classified into three types. Number one, ascending tracts. Number two, descending tracts. Number three, intersegmental tracts. Ascending tracts. Ascending tracts are sensory tracts. Connect impulses from the periphery to the brain through the spinal cord. The ascending tracts are of three types. Number one, those concerned with pain and temperature sensations and crude touch. Example, ventral and lateral spinothalamic tract. Number two, those concerned with fine touch and conscious proprioceptive sensations. Example, fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. Number three, those concerned with unconscious proprioception and muscular coordination. Example, ventral and dorsal spinocerebellar tracts. Descending tracts. Descending tracts are motor tracts carry impulses to the spinal cord from the brain. It is of two types. Number one, pyramidal tract. Number two, extra pyramidal tract. These two pyramidal tracts or systems has control over the motor activity of the body through the lower motor neuron. Pyramidal tract. It has a direct route to the lower motor neurons. The extra system has indirect and torsional scores to the lower motor neurons. The pyramidal tract includes ventral and lateral corticospinal tract. The extra system includes Rubrospinal tract, olivospinal tract, tectospinal tract, 
vestibular spinal tract and lateral and medial reticulospinal tract intersegmental tracts these tracts originate and end within the spinal cord they exist in the ventral lateral and posterior white columns these tracts connect the neurons present between the intersegmental part of the spinal cord okay example tract of leisure so this is the tracts and its types spinothalamic tract it is an ascending tract the spinothalamic tract is of two types number 1 lateral spinothalamic tract concerned with pain and thermal sensation number 2 ventral spinothalamic tract concerned with crude touch and pressure lateral spinothalamic tract or pain and temperature pathway it has three order of neurons first order neuron the cell bodies of the first order sensory neurons are present in the dorsal root ganglion The free nerve endings present in the skin receives the pain and temperature sensations passes through the dorsal root of the spinal nerve and enters the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, it ascends or descends one or two segments as dorsolateral tract of leisure and relays in the posterior tonsils present in the posterior gray column posterior tonsils including substantia gelatinosa so this is the first order neuron i will put it in simple words so this is the dorsal root ganglion the neurons present in the dorsal root ganglion is known as pseudo unipolar neurons it has a peripheral process and a central process the peripheral process okay this is the pain and temperature sensations from the skin and passes through the dorsal root of the spinal nerve this is the ventral root this is the dorsal root so passes through the dorsal root of the spinal nerve and it enters the posterior gray horn where it relates in the posterior horn cells that is the gray cell sensory cells present in the posterior gray horn okay it not only relates there okay it has its one or two segments above or descends one or two segments below as dorsal lateral tract of leisure dorsal lateral tract of leisure okay so what is substantia gelatinosa it is a substance present near the posterior end of the posterior gray column so there is substance present here so this is about the first order neuron the second order neuron the second order sensory neurons arise from the posterior horn cells crosses obliquely the anterior gray and white commissure and reaches the lateral white column and ascends on the contralateral white column as 
lateral spinothalamic tract. In the middle obligator, so in the middle obligator, the spinothalamic tract lies between the inferior olivary nucleus and the nucleus of spinal tract of trigeminal nerve. So it ascends between the spinal nucleus and the tract of trigeminal nerve and the inferior olivary nucleus. So this is the spinothalamic tract. Okay. In the middle of the gator, that is the upper part of the middle of the gator, it joins with the anterior spinothalamic tract and spinotectal tract to form spinal lemniscus. In the pons, in the pons, it ascends or it lies in the posterior part of the pons. So this is the posterior part of the pons, this is the anterior part of the pons. So you can see the spinal lumiscus here. So it ascends in the posterior part of the pons. In the midbrain, in the midbrain, it lies in the tegmentum of the midbrain. Where it lies lateral to the medial lumiscus. So this is the tectum and this area is the tegmentum. This is the crust cerebri and this is the substantia nigra. Okay. So this is the medial lemniscus, this is the spinal lemniscus, this is the trigeminal lemniscus. Okay. So in the midbrain, it lies in the tegmentum lateral to the medial lemniscus. Okay. It ends by Synapsing in the ventral posterolateral nucleus of thalamus. Ventral posterolateral nucleus of the thalamus. 90% of the fibers ends by relaying the thalamus. So, this is the second order neuron. Third order neuron. The axons of the third order sensory neurons arise from the ventral posterolateral nucleus of the thalamus and it passes through the internal capsule corona radiator this area corona radiator and finally it reaches the primary somesthetic area and secondary somesthetic area it reaches the somesthetic area which is present in the post central gyrus of cerebral cortex so this is the Origin, course, and termination of the lateral spinothalamic tract. Ventral spinothalamic tract. The ventral spinothalamic tract carries crude touch and pressure. The free nerve endings present in the skin receives the crude touch and pressure which passes through the dorsal root of the spinal nerve and reaches the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, it ascends or descends one or two segments as dorsolateral tract of lesion and relays in the posterior greyhound the horns, posterior horn cells present in the posterior grey form and including substantia gelatinosa. So this is the first order neuron of the anterior or ventral spinothalamic tract. Second order neuron. The axons arising from the posterior horn cells crosses obliquely the anterior grey and white commissure and reaches the anterior white column and ascends as anterior spinothalamic tract. In the middle of the data, okay, it lies between the inferior olivary nucleus and the spinal nucleus and tract of trigeminal nerve. 
Okay. Then it joins with the lateral spinal thalamic tract and spinal tectal tract to form the spinal meniscus. In the pons, it lies in the posterior part of the pons. In the midbrain, it lies in the tegmentum lateral to the medial lemniscus and it finally reaches the thalamus where it ends by synapsing in the ventral postrolateral nucleus of the thalamus. The third order sensory neurons arise from the ventral postrolateral nucleus of the thalamus, passes through the internal capsule, corona radiata and finally ends by relaying the somesthetic area present in the post central gyrus of cerebral cortex. So this is the pathway of the lateral spinothalamic tract and ventral spinothalamic tract. Damage to lateral spinothalamic tract causes loss of pain and temperature sensations below the level of lesion. Damage to ventral spinothalamic tract causes loss of pressure and crude touch okay. below the level of lesion.